In this home theater builder episode, I'm talking about automation and control systems, specifically the control four setup that I use in my room. So one of the most important elements that finishes your home theater is how you're going to control it. Nothing might kill your uber cool, super finished high tech space more than fiddling around with half a dozen different unique remotes to do anything let alone good luck with having any other member of your family operate it that way. When we built our home, I wanted some level of a smart house, inclusive of audio and video control. And I was looking for something more than a Harmony or a DIY setup, but not going all in on Crestron or something more terribly expensive. The dealer that did a lot of tech infrastructure for our home is a Control 4 integrator, and it looked like the right balance of features and price. I'll go into more detail in the future on Control 4 overall relative to our whole home, but keep this video focused more on the theater space, and suffice to say, we have a lot of automation throughout the house. Our Control 4 system is based currently on an EA5 controller, upgraded a couple years ago from an HC800. The controller drives the home theater and manages our projector, preamp, Kaleidoscape, Apple TV, lighting, and other device switching. We also upgraded a bit ago from the SR260 remotes to the Neo style ones. I keep one dedicated Neo on a charging base in the theater itself, and we have another one for our living room. Overall, I found Control 4 generally reliable, responsive, and pretty powerful. The Neo also is solid, well built, and feels good in the hand, but I do want more buttons, particularly hard transport control buttons. But let's break down exactly what kind of control we have in the theater and what's going on in there. First, power on and power off is managed through Control 4, of course. No HDMI, CEC, and the only 12 volt triggering used is from the Marantz preamp to the Emotiva amplifier. Using Control 4 with the room, we can one press to turn on everything to a specific source device, as well as power off. Since our theater is in the basement and we have all of our core house lighting zones also in Control 4, I have the system programmed to turn on the basement steps and basement room lights when the theater itself is turned on if it's nighttime, since we have to walk downstairs to get there. 99% of the time I would say that we go to use the room, I actually turn the room on from upstairs using my phone or some other device. The JVC projector takes a good bit of time to warm up and show an actual image, so I always like to make sure that everything is already on and usable. By the time I get down there, we get down there to use the room, and having all the lights automatically turn on to get there is great automation assistance. There's one lighting zone in the actual theater room itself though, which controls several ceiling lights. The control 4 lighting switch for that zone is in the room itself as well. We actually have nine ceiling lights in the room, but I disabled some of them because I converted the room as I mentioned in prior videos. And so we don't have the lights on at all that are in the front of the room by the screen, just the ones more in the back of the room that shine down onto the seating area. Powering off the room from the Neo while sitting on the couch after a movie also programmatically ensures the room light is left dimly on to allow a no tripping exit and returns the basement landing and the basement stair lights on at night to be able to walk back upstairs. Alternatively, a double tap of the in-room light switch actually powers down the room and all the electronics, accomplishing the same programming as well. I have a couch table behind our theater seating behind the couch with power available underneath, so the Neo dock is always sitting right there. The remote's always on the dock charging when the room isn't in use, so we never have a dead remote emergency. The other main programming that I have implemented so far is around the lighting itself and the sources for the theater. You can turn the lights to 100% via the wall switch, but changing sources in any programmed manner or turning the room on to a specific source in a program manner, like the Neo, results in a dimmed light setting for more comfort. With the Kaleidoscape and the easy cues built into the programming drivers, Lights are automatically set to dim to off when starting or resuming playback of a movie. And in addition, they dim back up to a low level if you pause, stop, or upon automatically reaching the end credits of a film. This is part of the magic of Kaleidoscape in that the cues for the credit start are part of the vast metadata that they encode for all of their offered content. Having automatic lights on credit roll is just so cool and very timely as that's the time when most folks stop paying attention to the content and start starting to stir around, pick up their dropped popcorn and so on. In a future video, I'll show specifically how I program this in Control 4 and go into detail on some more ideas that I have in mind to try as well. I do accomplish a similar lighting control with an Apple TV via Control 4, 
but it's nowhere near as intelligent nor complete as using the Kaleidoscape. I have the light set to dim to off whenever pressing play for the Apple TV and then dim to the low level again on pause or stop of playback. It works. However, most of the time I actually end up starting playback of content on Apple TV by pressing enter, not play. So you have to remember to use the Neo the exact right way to use the Apple TV and also get the lighting control because it's not built in and integrated. It's just some intelligence kind of applied over top of the use of the buttons of the device itself. There's also the issue that I actually really prefer using the Apple provided remote when I'm using an Apple TV much more than the Neo. And using that, there's no automated lighting control at all. So in that case, you are stuck juggling multiple remotes. There might be something I could try to enable maybe via HomeKit or whatnot, but I'm not aware of anything easy to bring these things together. If I do find a way, rest assured, I'll make a video on it. One other thing that I set with the Control 4 lighting and source switching though, is different dimming levels depending on the source. When we watch video content and movies in our room, we watch with the lights all the way off. But when I game, I find I don't really like gaming fully in the dark. I like a very, very small dimming level with the lights still on a bit, something like 10% or 12%. So switching to a game source changes the dim level lower than a video source, given video sources will dim completely to off once something is actually playing on screen. All done, again, via Control 4 automation. Now, there are more advanced things to be done in the room with Control 4. I've seen a post recently on a Kaleidoscape Facebook forum where someone was browsing their available downloaded movie content right on the Neo screen. And that's a neat kind of showpiece and tacky integration, and I might set it up just to see it and try it out. But I feel, in general, there's a lot of automation that people do that looks or sounds neat, but it really isn't just that useful in real practice. Case in point, for me, if I'm sitting in the room with the Neo in my hand, why would I ever browse my movies on the Neo itself? The Kaleidoscape UI would already be up on the big screen right in front of me in all of its shifting cover flow glory. What I could see being more valuable going forward is potentially using the lens memories of the projector to move ultra widescreen content to the lower portion of my 16.9 screen. This could be automated in Kaleidoscape with the metadata cues similar to the lighting. And K also has settings to ensure subtitles are shown inside the content image versus ever below it. So my subtitles would never get lost off the bottom of the screen if I were to actually move the image down. In addition, I might look at more advanced projector settings management for video content versus gaming content. With everything going to a single projector HDMI input in my system, I might want to take advantage of more low latency style settings versus image or HDR processing settings depending on if I'm gaming versus watching video. Of course, I'll make dedicated videos around all this kind of advanced home theater automation in the future. I should mention as well that as much and wherever possible, I strive for IP control in my systems, including the theater. IP is so much more reliable and simpler than IR or serial, particularly serial. IP is also pretty widely available now. The Marantz, the Kaleidoscape, and the Apple TV are all driven with IP drivers. I don't specifically have menu control set for any gaming sources, as I just switch to them and then use the respective game controllers or my wireless mini keyboard mouse pad for the gaming PC. I don't see the need to control the game systems with the actual remote. And they lack IP control anyway, so I'm not setting up IR flashers or doing anything more complex when again, you just use the pad anyway. Note that I do not run a Lumigen or any other type of advanced video processing in the room either else there would perhaps be even another level of automation and control needed in this space. I know, I probably lost a little bit of street cred with some viewers to not be a Lumigen owner. However, I find my sources and JVC's advanced tone mapping and processing capabilities already do a ton. They do a great job. Yes, I don't know what I might be missing, but I try to accept the idea that Lumigen would be a lot more money for a relatively small potential improvement. Plus, I want this room ready for HDMI 2.1, 4K, 120Hz gaming and all that, and video processing won't be at that level for a while. I also just went for a simple fixed frame screen and fixed curtains in my space. So there's no need to automate anything there, no masking or so on, except again that previous idea of moving ultra wide screen content down in a constant image width type setup. My space just really doesn't have that many moving parts to it. Going forward, other stuff I might consider as well for automation could involve some level of voice control. That might be neat, but we'll see. And again, in my theater, 
I've got the wall light switch and I've got my Neo. I don't see a need for more elaborate control panels in the room or on the walls. If I want an advanced touch interface to interact with my content, my gear, or information while I'm in the room in general, I have my iPads and I have my iPhone. That's what those are for. I had been keeping an older iPad mini that my wife formerly used in the theater on a dock just behind the couch as well. But what I've discovered over time is it's fairly useless sitting in there for how often it actually gets used in the room. It gets used so sparingly. It, using it actually usually means needing to wait to power the thing on from an off state, waiting for updates, making it entirely pointless for quick pickup and use, which is what I had it in there for to begin with. Plus it's a really old model, it's slow, she's actually dropped it, the screen is cracked. I would just rather use my, my more up-to-date model, my recent iPad, my recent iPhone, just far simpler. If we need something in hand again, I already have my phone with me, and I can bring my personal iPad with me to the room when I go in there. So I think I'm just going to remove and sell off that old mini and just eliminate it. So that's automation. Control 4 works for me and does some really cool stuff. I'll figure out some more neat things to do coming up. Let me know what you're using and any cool theater room automation that you have in the comments. And please like and particularly subscribe for more content. I need those subs to help grow the channel. Thanks.